Testing. You know, Jay, Testing. I don't I don't know if the go on thing one works if you pause for five seconds and then belch yeah. and then I, say one. <laughs> listen, I cannot control when I belch, okay? Uh, I am a creature of gas. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I am a creature of constant gas that will one day explode from inside of me. Talk- I have no control over it. Have we talked about either in our personal lives or on the podcast yet about how I physically can't burp? What? We have not. Never, not yeah. once. What the fuck? No, I, I physically can't. I've never... I Like, I have burped a couple of times in my life, um, usually due to either serious drunkenness or serious acid reflux, but never just independent of those two things. I don't... You know, I believe you because you're my friend, but I also just don't believe you. I don't know what podcast I was watching this week, but there was a podcast I was watching where they were like, a doctor said to a patient, uh, you're not allowed to sneeze, sneezing isn't normal. And the podcasters were like, what the f*** does that mean, sneezing isn't normal? And the, the doctor was like, I've never sneezed in my life. I'm like, I don't believe you. And if that's the case, are you an alien in a human body? Anyway, that was the bit. I don't know where it was from. That's, but that's I feel like... like that with you saying you've never burped in your entire life. Well, here, it gets funnier, too, because my dad was the same way. My dad couldn't burp for his whole f-ing life, and then he hit 30 for some reason and could burp just fine. So there's hope. I got two years left, and then there's maybe hope. I can burp. I don't know. At what at what point were you was a brood larva put into your body, and how long have you been a brood in masquerade? I don't know. I don't know. I just it's it's a funny thing where I remember like because my parents are so young they had me pretty young where like I was that was like eleven or twelve or something when my dad was thirty so like I remember him burping one day and me like jumping and like looking like what the, what the <laughs> f- is that what just happened what was that. <laughs> I'm just picturing 11-year-old Chris just from, like, across the room. Here's a burp and just here's, I'm free. I'm finally free. (laughs) (laughs) I've needed that for 30 years. that thing again where we sit here for 10 minutes just talking about anything that we can to not start the podcast yeah you make a great point hello welcome to stars <laughs> every week forever the podcast in which we watch star wars every single week forever this week must i even say it it's attack of the clones ben how is your watch fucking terrible that's all that's all that's that's the whole that's that's the bit it was did, bad, bad movie for for bad watch. For did a, you watch it on your solo? Nobody in the office night shift. Yeah, because it was either that or uh, find another way to not fall asleep. So mm. uh, I was I was like sitting there writing up things for work while fucking Anakin was creepy. Yeah. Chris, how's your watch? So I went off the uh, the beaten path here for my watch this week. I uh, normally the radio drama. The way this normally works is like if we're recording on normally, a peek behind the curtain. We've done this before. Normally, the way this works is we record like a Friday or a Saturday night. So normally, I watch the movie like day of. Um, I'll watch it in the morning because Fridays my wife works super early, so I'm up at five a.m. with nothing to do for hours before I go to work. Or I watch it Saturday mornings while I'm hanging out with my kid while my wife is at work. And I'm also up at 5 a.m. because that kid's internal clock is always on time. Um, This week, I couldn't sleep last night. My wife went to bed, 10 o'clock, out. I was up till fucking 3 a.m. because I just couldn't sleep. Um, So I watched it last night. And what I tend to do on Friday nights as well as weekend nights is I get super fucking high after the kid goes to bed. It's been a long week of work. I'm just getting super high, and that usually helps me sleep. Not last night for some reason. Um, 
So I was sitting in bed with my earbuds in, watching Attack of the Clones. Movie, way funnier when it's 2 a.m. and you're high as shit. <laughs> and you just can't <laughs> sleep. The funny thing about that is Chris and I were probably watching this movie at the exact same time. I watched it, I think, Thursday. I want to say Thursday. And it might be the worst watch that I've had in a very, very, very long time. I can't remember the last time I was this fucking miserable. Now, granted, it could have been recently and I'm just not remembering. But it's been a very long time since I've been this fucking miserable watching this movie. Uh, if you need proof, the uh, the first note on my in my notes is I fucking hate Anakin. Like I I, I wrote that Fair. down. I knew it wasn't gonna be important to bring up, but I wrote it down anyway. It's always important to bring up how insufferable Anakin Skywalker yeah, is. Yeah, but we never shut the fuck up about it either. And we won't. I'm not even going to pretend like we're going to. Yeah, but, no, like, people guy. don't talk about it nearly enough, so, like, yeah. We don't shut the fuck up about it. Nobody should. <laughs> Nobody should be. I I also, at the end of my notes, said, let's rank all the scenes we hate most. I'll start the fucking droid factory. Like, that, that was the mood of my watch, was just, like, I hate all of this. I hate all of this so fucking much. I hate watching this. Like, it was just, I was miserable. I was flat out fucking miserable. C three PO gets me through the droid factory. It's and the the battle of Geonosis. It's so fucking loud. That scene. I get is, mad. Like three PO doesn't even get me through it because it feels like we're there because of three PO at a certain yes. point where it's like this scene is here just to make this happen. It's the worst three PO slapstick in all the movies. It's it's the best. It is the cream of the crop. No, the fuck it ain't. Yes, yes it is. Those are Bad. best fucking... It's legitimately body horror. Like, it's legitimately body horror to me. That's that's fair. I didn't I didn't think of that, that, uh, that context. I, and it doesn't help that I know, and I've brought this up a million times, God help me, um, I know that it was a massive fight uh behind the scenes like and flat out arguing for days uh between uh john williams and um ben burt about ben Bert. about leveling the music and the sound in this scene um and i'm grumpy towards both of them because i wish they would have just shut everything off which one of them do you think uh was like you know, they're days into arguing about this, and they're just screaming and yelling, and which one do you think it was that just finally threw their hands up and was like, look, this scene fucking sucks anyway. Do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either either did that. Because it was like, have you ever been in one of those situations where you're at a workplace and two people are arguing but pretending they're not? It's like that every day. It's like that passive aggressive arguing yeah. that it makes em- yeah, a lot of they days. might as well be screaming at each other with how tense the fucking room is. I I have two coworkers. One is a a fucking Ben Shapiro might. And the other is a a well meaning white liberal man. So uh that is every work day for me. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's how those scenes went, um, and I I find that they did not come to a good answer. They just were loud the whole. Let's just time. put all the levels through the 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 fucking. Roof. I get a migraine like half the times I watch this movie around that point. I I do agree that 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 whole area is just sensory overload. And like it doesn't help that the Geonosians weapons have genuinely the most grating sound I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's it's deeply annoying to me. Uh, and I'm criticizing Ben Burt, and I'm sorry, Ben Burt, you're my hero, but also, like, I'm so fucking tired of watching Star Wars, and this movie sucks so fucking bad. So... Uh, to be fair, Ben Burt didn't, I think, create this stuff in a vacuum. I'm pretty sure George had some input, so I don't know that we can singularly blame you Ben know, Burt. <laughs> the way that every ben burt documentary goes i don't i think he just did whatever 
I, I really honestly, I think that's why Ben Burke didn't come back for episodes eight and nine, because he sure. is. Are we uh, are we defending Georgie Boy right now? No, I'm defending Ben Burt to an extent. Ben Burt came back. Well, on I tried to take some of the blame off of Ben Burt, and you were like, "Nah, it's Ben Burt." <laughs> the level of freedom that Ben Burt has on the Star Wars movies is frankly disturbing. There, one of his documentaries opens up with him going to fly a World War One plane, of which there are four left in the world. While his partner works on, while his partner picks up the foley of the sound effects, thinking we can do something with that, which is totally true. Most foley artists, what they're looking to do is pick up weird songs, weird sounds, so that they can learn and break and, and mold them and break them and change the sound, so that they can use it for something else. Um, well, at least for these kind of movies. But it's also very clear he did this because it was a bucket list thing. And he was like, I'll probably get something good out of this. And he did. He got uh, one of the speeders uh, uh, from uh, uh, Coruscant out of that. That in and of itself is really funny to me. That he flies <laughs> this very rare plane. There's four left of them. And like he's like, this is really cool that I got this sound. And instead of making that like the sound of like one of the iconic ships of the franchise he was just like that's eh, a speeder it's a speeder on coruscant yeah it's a it's a lot of playing and he says in the the documentary hey, you never know what's going to be useful and what's going to be un not useful but i think that's why episode seven was so difficult for him he just got to do whatever in the prequels can't say for the original trilogy but for sure in the prequels he just lived the dream life and in episode seven, he was probably dealing with so much fucking crunch and oversight that he's like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm out. I don't want to do this no fucking more. So I, I think, I, I don't think George's oversight was as heavy as we might believe uh, on his end. I think he just trusted Ben Burr. I don't think he was oversighting as much as he did in the CGI offices with the Widowmaker and such. I, uh, I do have a decent amount of notes at least, but most of them are pretty, uh, uh, useless. One of them was, I want Jocasta knew a Star Wars story. Yes. I think we've talked about this before. I don't know if we have, but it's possible. It feels like early rotations, but nonetheless, yes. Let me just search in this document. Maybe I Give do. me space librarian the star wars movie because i fucking love jacosta new she's so weird i thought she was a sith a secret sith when i first watched this movie she went toe to toe with vader in the comics with a gun that shoots lightsabers i definitely brought up that i thought she was a secret sith lord that might be what i'm thinking about i definitely brought that up i'm now seeing um I also wrote down, I could hear the deadpan drum uh, when Obi-Wan says, why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Like, I could mentally picture the monkey just going, sigh, tch, 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 like, as I was watching <laughs> it. It's a, it's a bad watch. There's such a, like, <clears throat> consistently, every fucking time, there is just such a low on this movie. Yep. Like, even if we're kind of, like, have even if we had kind of had a good Phantom Menace episode, which happens occasionally, not for nothing, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, this rotation's Phantom Menace episode wasn't the worst. Um, I don't think we talked about the movie at all, but... Any, yeah, uh, I don't. Any other, any other notes, Jay? Anything? Oh, I have plenty yeah. of notes. Well, I think you're right, Chris, because like, like you said, even coming off of a momentum of like, if we have a good episode one, yeah. episode two is just such a fucking speed bump of just a down. fucking film. Yeah. yeah, this movie is a speed bump. That's actually like a great analogy <laughs> because like, Revenge of the Sith is great, and Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I think it's not remembered as well necessarily as it was when it first came out. 
a lot of stuff got backlash in that movie, but overall I think the movie was received fairly well. This movie really is just a fucking speed bump. Maybe that's why Revenge of the Sith is, like, so beloved. And, you know, we, we talk up Revenge of the Sith quite a bit, but I, I sometimes think we potentially talk it up more than it deserves, but, uh... That's why it's so well thought yeah. of, because this movie sucks so fucking bad that by the yes. time you get over into Revenge of the Sith, it's like, oh shit, this is a good movie, what happened? Yes and no. No to the first point, yes to the second. No, we do not hype it up enough, because it's the consistently good watch. Uh, yes, it is not as good as um, as uh, it actually is. It just comes off of the one of the worst movies in the entire saga, and therefore, by osmosis, is better. But no, we don't hype it fucking up. Fucking hate movies. You fucking hate movies. Are we, is, are hate we back movies. to this now? We're back to Ben's hitting movie arcs. Is this where we're at? We're closing. We yeah, we left that arc. We're closing out 2022 here, and Ben's just embracing the fact that he hates movies. Closing out right. 2022, Ben's on his Sith arc. Ben, yeah, I'm on my. I'm on my. Just embracing the hatred. Anyway. Star Wars. So I did have a, a realization this time, uh, oh. and it was why I laughed so fucking hard at the uh, Yoda um, uh, just dunking on Obi Wan using a bunch of kids. It's always so good. I think the way the reason it works so well is that all of the adults in this movie speak like like blundering fucking fools. Like, they can't put the most basic two and two together to make four. They they question obvious things throughout the entire fucking movie and can't seem to make an informed assumption. So when a child says something deeply obvious to an adult who doesn't know the answer to a simple mathematical addition problem, it's very funny because they seem smarter than every other character in the fucking movie. This, maybe this is a reach, maybe it's not, but I feel like the whole movie up to that point is what makes that scene so fucking funny. Because of how bad it's written. It's absolutely not a reach. Because, and I think we've, we've said before, like, it takes a child telling Obi-Wan, maybe there's just something there. For him to go, oh, well, then maybe I should go there and, like, look around. Like, like no fucking shit, Obi-Wan. It also doesn't help that they don't explain Obi-Wan not thinking of that because nobody's ever broken into the Jedi Archives until after that particular point is made. So we have no reason for him not to, for the obvious conclusion not to be something he already considered until after he's been dunked on by a child. But yeah, it, it, I think I think that is so funny because of how badly written every character in this fucking movie is to seem like a total dunce. I just... I, I hate the Jedi. I hate the Jedi so fucking much. Because they're just... They always have their heads so firmly hate. up their ass. Yeah. And it's just... Even, like, if you... Jay, Jay's gonna hate me for this, but, like, if, if you've watched The Clone Wars, you know just how terribly clo Like, literal hours would have been taken from where The Clone Wars ends for them to realize, like, oh, shit, the clones are gonna betray us any fucking minute now. Like, it... It's like pulling teeth trying to see the Jedi painstakingly, like try to put the puzzle pieces together because it is so fucking obvious by near the end of the last season of the clone wars and they just don't fucking get it well i mean I'm, i don't hate you for it i just have never watched the show and there's not it's my fault really um i mean it's not my fault because i decided to do this podcast and that's why i don't watch the show but you know it's my fault that i don't have that context but also I feel like, and this is an uneducated guess, it's more obvious to you than it should be to the characters because you have seen every angle of this conspiracy before the Clone Wars even happens and as the Clone Wars happen. No, like, 
legit near the end of the Clone Wars, the Jedi realize that there are chips that are used to mind control the clones. Oh. <laughs> and they're also well aware that, like, an unknown benefactor funded the clone army. And they're also well aware that the, the genetic template was a bounty hunter known for fighting Jedi. I do really ho- hate that plot point. <laughs> I, I really do hate that chips in their heads plot point, actually, a lot. I don't. I mean, I... It's not the They best. had to do something because they had portrayed the clones in such a way in the Clone Wars that to have them just flip a switch just and shrug betray, and start yeah yeah like that's they had to do something they this is going to sound really fucked up because i i it's one of the things i like the most about clone wars but from their perspective this is what they did they humanized the clones too much mm-hmm. in the clone wars and so, in order to save a little bit of face for those characters, they had to do the chips. See, I don't, I don't get that, and I'll tell you why. We are dealing with a group of people that were tank-bred for nothing but war. Them acting out against this fascist fucking thing that they've been put through and created for, that is more unlikely than them following the orders and regretting it later. I don't like it because it takes away the agency of a lot of characters, and it also destroys, like, a lot of interesting stories along the way where them doing what they've been taught to do their whole lives, which is obey orders, gets to a point where they have to make a very difficult decision, and a majority do make the decision based on it being an order, and it takes away the idea of them regretting it so much that that's the reason why they're not involved in stormtroopers afterwards you know it takes away the the uh um going back to camino and rebelling and everything like that it just i i don't know it just it's way less interesting to me than just leaning into these they've been they've been taken advantage of they've been they've been programmed and now they have to unprogram themselves because they were they did like the worst thing humanly possible because they were ordered to and bred to to a degree i uh what was i saying no come back the thought he's reaching Uh, out trying to grab the thought (laughs) trying to grab the train of thought as it's leaving the station um i mean to a degree like they like getting rid of a lot of the stuff that was in the established canon, they kind of had to do something because they got rid of the Camino Uprising. Like that wasn't canon anymore. It's true. And they had to figure something else out. And again, like I said, they had like uh who who's the one that the one that ends up uh trying to kill Obi Wan? That's Rex, right? No, Cody? not Rex. That's uh Cody. Cody, yeah. Cody's the Cody's the one where uh to me, like, you had to do something. Because in the Clone Wars, you see Cody a lot. You know, like, he's not the most... Not an asshole of the clones, to a degree. But, like, the quick just, like, Yeah, Obi-Wan, here's your lightsaber, cool. And then grabbing the fucking, like, and just, you know, ordering him to be shot down. Like, that's too quick. That always felt yeah. off to me, yeah. like... Well, I don't know, because Cody like, was always very by the book kind of like yes but he also had a certain closeness that you there would there should be some hesitation where there was literally none yeah. there was no fucking hesitation at all with any of the clones in attack the clone like there's no there's not a single shot of a clone like are you sure and another clone being like yeah fucking shoot him whatever the, the <laughs> most we get is <laughs> that shot where Cody answers the the fucking phone and palpatine's like kill obi-wan and he like changes his posture a little bit and he just shrugs it and shoots him like he there's a yeah. little bit of a shift but like that's it like i don't know i guess i just mourned the ideas of storytelling that could have come from well and look we're like, getting that to a degree yeah. though like we're we're still getting a portion of that and to me honestly the the chips in the head thing makes 
Palpatine that much more. Well, yeah. You know, it's not just well, soldiers following orders and this and that. It's like, no, that makes him so much more evil. He's forcing these clones to kill their friends. And then, what, five, ten years later, he's decided, ah, oh, these aren't useful to me anyway. And he fucking gets rid of all the clones anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, like... and there are, uh, I believe, I might be wrong, but there are cases of, like, clones coming to realize what they've done even with the chips like they still yeah. have a lot of trauma from all that shit going down yeah yeah like there's still plenty of that it's just they found a way to do it in uh they found a way to do it i think in a way that serves the story overall better i guess you know like i it's it's another dave filoni decision that i will defend to death because dave filoni is the second coming of fucking star wars at this point he's uh breathe the new life into the franchise just give him fucking can I, movies can already. i have some of that breath because i have no breath to be given life to in star wars consume yeah any, you just gotta watch well, the dave filoni the, you don't no i'd rather dave fucking die. led star wars project i'm not i will never this is why i still i'm not this is why i still like star wars because i i yeah. watch the good star wars as well as bad star wars i don't have fucking time you just watch the bad star wars no i get it look i get it i understand i'm just saying this is why ben and i still like star wars as an idea at the very least you know? <laughs> how about how about we hand over all the work that i do in my end to someone else and see if you want to still watch all these fucking shows fun, after chris. it <laughs> chris what the hell do you want me to do that i got a fucking human to keep alive what do you <laughs> The only reason this podcast is still going is because I have the ability to to find the time to edit. It's true. And that's why I take my I'm not watching other shit out. I could do a million other things. I'm not watching Star Wars. No, that's fair. We're not. I know. Make I know. I'm not getting defensive. I'm just saying, like, from my perspective, I'd be miserable if I did that, even if I liked the thing. Like, Obi-Wan was a show that I liked. I still regret the time I put into it because I could have been doing other things. Jesus. I don't have the time to spend six hours a week editing and do this show and all of that. I just, I don't, I have enough of a more than half a day to put into this podcast every week. I know it's a cliche and it's what every person who makes online content says and ultimately follows through and there's a reason for it but if we ever make a dime from this fucking podcast literally the first thing it goes into is hiring an editor right like that's like that would be goal number one right well if we ever make more than a dime off of this podcast that's a fucking crime against humanity <laughs> first of all uh i i don't know i don't know cuz that would be income that I do not have, um, and I do enjoy editing. Uh, that is... I was going to say, we're... Chris is just like, yeah, if we get any money off of this, we're taking Jay's job, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not taking Jay's job. It's, uh, you know, taking some weight off of Jay. That's true. That's also <laughs> that point. true. That is very what true. I would do is... It, here's what would happen... It Here's what would happen if we had an editor... I would look at the editor and I would say, you're doing the boring work, I'm doing the fun work. You can fucking sync audio <laughs> levels. You can sit through an episode and sync fucking audio levels. I'm never doing it again. You don't get to do anything creative. Then you're handing it over to me so I can do the creative shit. Here's, uh, By the way, here's really ten funny. images is... you have to put onto the MP4. Nope, nope. <laughs> That's what I do. That's my job. No, like sending them the completed images. <laughs> No, I'm telling you, I will do the MP4. They just have to... <laughs> their job is to make the Audacity file. They will just send you a raw Audacity they, file. They fucking... Their only job is to level the fucking Audacity audio, <laughs> and then I do everything else. That's what they would be paid for. <laughs> like, I don't know why this is never... Because, you know, we don't ever plan to make money off of this show. No. But, hey, we got that sweet sponsor money coming in now, finally. Yeah. You know, these sponsorship deals. Um... <laughs> I've never even fathomed the idea of bringing another person on yeah. this show. Like, just any lot. Like, having any level of, like, success with making this a thing that makes money is such a foreign concept to me. 
I've never thought about how fucking funny it would be to have like an outside editor. <laughs> <laughs> but he well, on to have to do anything involving this as show. As much as I just joked about it, that editor would become a part of the show. You realize it, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, they wouldn't be a part of the recording, but they would definitely do the same thing I do often enough where they just put oh, their voice right. and comment on something. Like, they'd be part oh, of the Oh, and they'd show. definitely become That's a, a band. Yeah. That's the thing. The best editors are uh, are ones that know how to flex that creative muscle. Um, oh God, what's uh, what's his name? Um, the guy that edits for Markiplier these days. Oh, I have no idea. Um, Lixian, I no think. Idea. Incredible editor, and that's just a running bit. It's very good. Um, I know. I, I think uh, Barry from Old School Game Grumps is kind of the uh, yeah one of the bigger examples that people remember. And that's awesome, because, like, you usually think of editors as being, like, these strictly behind-the-scenes people who are, like, kind of, like, never seen but sometimes heard, and, like, that they have their own personality in certain productions is great. YouTube changed the game, because individual people got enough money to hire editors... And then they said, hey, well, you're ed doing all this work for me anyway. Why don't I make you part of the show? And that changed the industry, practically. Mm -hmm. The way that... It was a whole new dynamic. It was. Li it's literally for an entire generation what behind-the-scenes stuff was for me. So... Yeah. Shout-out to the editors. Shout-out to uh, the editors. Unsung heroes of new media. Yeah. Often paid and overworked yeah. looking at you rooster teeth <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> the industry is very dependent on them and uh speaking of being very dependent on something uh <laughs> today's sponsor uh water uh thank you today's sponsor water um are you feeling dizzy dry throat shaky drink water did you know the human body is made up of 50 to 55% water, which we are constantly shedding through a variety of means as we march towards the inevitable system shutdown known as death? Uh, the general consensus is that you should be drinking 64 ounces of water per day. That's big water calling. With all those bags of cash. That's big water calling! Oh, Hold on. Um... Where was I? Yeah, uh, general consensus, you should be drinking 64 ounces of water per day, or, you know, do what I did, don't drink any water ever until you're about 24 or so, and almost blow a kidney out, uh, and then just spend the rest oh, of your God life Christ. drinking 100 ounces of water a day just to feel alive, you know? So, yes, um, thank you. This ad, we're not getting paid for this ad, this is Chris <laughs> fulfilling a life debt to Water Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Are thank we done you, with the water, water bit? Did I miss no, the no, water no, bit? No, 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 no. We, uh, no. Thank you, uh, water. We're, uh, we're, we're near in the tail end. Just, you know, big shouts out to water again. Big shout out, shout water. Out to water. Thank you for sponsoring. Uh, thank you for sponsoring. Um, and you know, you can use promo code, and this is a long one, so bear with me. Uh, it's a wild promo code they threw out here. It's very long. Um, so use promo code. Just go to your tap and drink some fucking water. Do you have any idea how much pollution those fucking plastic bottles cause? Do you even give a shit about the planet, you monster? Uh, thank you again, Water, for sponsoring uh, today's show. It's, uh... Uh, I feel like I should follow that up with maybe the U.S. government should take better care of uh, of a lot of uh, tap water in the United States. Maybe yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe that's or or make sure some people I'm... get tap water at all. Un unfortunately, I'm in a location I don't quite trust my tap water. <laughs> I mean, I probably shouldn't have trusted the tap water where I grew up, but I turned out fine. <laughs> That's because you didn't drink water till you were that 24. Was my that was my favorite thing about that bit, by the way. Your New Yorker came out so fucking hard every time you said water. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. The sun is cresting over the hill outside my apartment complex. <laughs> the sun is... <laughs> this episode not brought to you by the sun. Calm down. Relax. Have your time. <laughs> Everything the light touches is your kingdom, Relax, Chris. You'll have your time, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's about it's water, about water son. son. God. Such a one life need at a time, Jesus Christ! God. Big ass ball of fire. Anyway, if you would like to sponsor us, <laughs> son, maybe you can blind Chris's camera. But you're not sponsoring yeah. us right now. Water, water is sponsoring is. us. Water. 
Gotta get that fucking water, water in Water. <sighs> it was uh, pretty great that we landed water this early on in uh, the sponsorship game. That's uh, yeah, true. Thanks, pretty sponsor. wild. It's a oh. uh, world renowned. World renowned. Absolutely the, essential to life. It's up there with uh, Raid Shadow Legends in terms of like most. God, sponsored. don't even. You've mentioned their name. Now we're doomed. I'm, it's not the first time. I mean, they're handing those spon. They're handing those sponsorships out like fucking candy. Can we get a fucking Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship? Yeah, fucking. More. No. Uh, these days, if if they reach out to us, we have to send them. If they reach out to us, we have to send them a ridiculous figure. I don't know. I have I have other things that I would I have stronger opinions on putting my foot down on other than a bad mobile. Game. I'm not Look, saying if it's we my can, strongest. What do, opinion, what do you think like, Raid Shadow Legends is paying people for sponsorships? Hold on. I bet you can find out pretty quick if we Google it, but n not the time or the place. Oh, I think this is exactly the time. <laughs> hey, Raid Shadow. Pay. Hey, Raid Shadow Legends, get in touch with us. We'll decide from there if we want to sponsor you. Um, there's other ones that I would never even consider on ethical standpoints that I've seen. Uh, that I would... I'm not saying that <laughs> it's like my number no. one I would never. The fucking Raid Shadow Legends is apparently handing out 4 to 5k to YouTubers for fucking promoting Raid Shadow Legends. Raid, Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. Hey, have you, you guys heard about Raid Shadow Legends? Fucking... <laughs> have you all heard about Raid Shadow Legends? I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Raid Shadow Legends. Personally, I play all the time. Red Shadow Legends, you want, to, uh, you want to advertise with us? We'll advertise your shitty fucking game. You have you have nine weeks, and then we will shit all over nine, you. Are we holding Raid Legends. Shadow Legends ransom right now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, think, I don't want to come down strong for it or against it, because Ben has opinions, and we should hear his opinions first. <laughs> no, I think you just fuck those guys. Hey, listen. Like here in their shit. Look, I don't care. Look, you want to give me five k? I'll fucking I'll talk about your stupid mobile game. All right. It's probably just spyware for a foreign government, like a lot of other apps. Who knows? Who's who's to say? <laughs> the um, the ther the online therapy ones are the ones that I for sure want to put my. Oh no! Down 100%, on. Oh, not. absolutely! Absolutely, no, absolutely no. fuck those. Yeah. They are. Uh, supposedly from some actual people I've talked to very helpful for some people but ultimately just incredibly predatory the way they fucking advertise so absolutely yeah. not and yeah and the uh, uh, butcher box or whatever the fuck that is because they are uh, shady box. too I don't know why but they're fucking everywhere anyway the episode that we're recording no idea what that even is uh, the episode that we're recording that is attack of the clones Fuck that! Fuck we talked about attacking clones, clones way too much. Like... We're on. We're on to. Uh, we're too on much. to the sponsorships okay. we want or don't want. Water. <laughs> I feel. Uh, I feel like. Well, we are sponsored by pants. By pants. We are... No, we're not sponsored by pants because there's no pants in that box, Ben. Th this is the third time I'm telling you there's pants in this fucking box. Show me. You refuse to ben, show me. Show up me to your this pants. Point. Show me your pants. There are in fact pants in it. I pants. rescind <laughs> my comment. See, now there's not only pants in it. I never said there was only pants. I, in fact, last week... Let's we'll start a website by, called Only Pants. Which, by which I mean yesterday. No, that uh, was not yesterday. That was last week. <laughs> I don't know what, what just happened I that you lost a week. I specifically but... said... I specifically said, I've got more than just pants in there. But it is mainly pants. Well, you need if to put I, shirts and pants If I start a website called shirts. Only Pants, if I, I, uh, if I just slightly... If I just oh, slightly man. modify the OnlyFans logo with, like, a pair of pants, do you think that I'll get sued? Yeah, Only pants. pants. <laughs> Join my OnlyPants today. You can subscribe to my pants newsletter. Oh, uh, you're setting me up to do that myself, and I'm not a big fan. I should have saved that one for a sponsorship. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we could talk about OnlyFans as services. But we... <laughs> Hell yeah, we can talk about it. This is the episode the where we s show how unadvertiser friendly we are by either shitting on or sucking up to every fucking advertiser no, look, there is. There's a. No, I'd advertise I'd, for OnlyFans. Yeah, I'd advertise for OnlyFans. It's... Well, yeah, we t advertise for OnlyFans, but. We are a sex worker positive podcast. podcast. Yes, we are. Which OnlyFans, not necessarily sex worker friendly, but. 
Uh, well, look, when you're left with when you're everyone collectively when you're left with no point. options, the one option sometimes is the best option. <laughs> yeah. Remember a few years ago, there was like a big craze where uh, people were getting sponsored by like that Japanese um, crane machine, like online service. Mm, no. Yeah, that should not. That be was uh, that was really fucking funny. That was really fucking funny. They just gave like a bunch of YouTubers like free credits to play this claw machine that had a camera hooked up to it in Japan that you played from your computer. And then if what you the won fuck? stuff, they yeah. would tell you the prizes. Yeah, that that's big business yeah. now. Uh, and now it's, uh, as with all gambling things, has been turned into a business where the odds are no longer that's in. The other the thing. That's the other thing. I, I mean, th anything arcade-like has never been. Yeah, honestly, really. never nothing. That's probably, there's a lot of, there's not a lot of advertisers I think I'd really put my foot down and say no about. Um, the fucking, like, betting ones, that's, that's a, that's a big no for me, I think. Yeah. All the, uh, uh under the no fucking bullshit it. you see sponsored on fucking By the way, podcasts and shit. Abs if I want to get demonetized, hey, YouTube, what the fuck happened during the pandemic where every advertisement on your fucking website was about betting fucking apps? Yeah. You fucking scumbags. I mean, it was like that a little bit before, but not nearly I, the I extent. I live in a state where gambling is pretty uh, easy. You can go to a fucking gas stations and bars have like actual like. Um, that's not that Same. was not a thing in New York that I ever came across. Um, maybe I just didn't go to enough bars in New York, but uh, you didn't go to enough bars in PA. Then. I, I didn't go to any bars in PA. You just came down here to yeah, buy cigarettes. And over to Jersey to get gas, and then back to New York. That's called the uh, <laughs> that's the East Coast circuit, you know. <laughs> that's a tri-state circuit. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Alcohol in New York, cigarettes in PA, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gas in New Jersey. Yeah, no, there's uh, there's plenty of ways for people to bet. You don't need to make it easier for them on fucking goddamn apps. Um, also weirdly. Any of the uh, various CBD or, like, THC companies that sponsor with people, because uh, I work in the industry now, and I know that a lot of their stuff is not so good. <laughs> and I don't want to oh, point no. people to those. Uh, the big sponsor that we need to just accept that we have to do one day is Disney Plus. Best seven ninety nine in the bid. I mean, if we get a Disney fucking sponsorship, that, like, that's... That is so many things have to happen. So many things <laughs> go wrong. Yeah, so yeah, many things like have to go wrong. If we get wrong. to a point where we get a fucking Disney sponsorship, like a Disney Plus sponsorship, where we're shouting out Disney Plus and getting paid for it, something has gone very wrong in the world because we have reached a level of notoriety that is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I, I watched a Patrick Willem Zack Snyder video uh, recently, and he said, it, like, right up at the front, he made, like, a lot of thing. He said a lot of stuff at the start to try to dissuade people that were going to have strong opinions at the start. He said, I have found on the internet, talking about Zack Snyder negatively is about as difficult as talking about Star Wars at all on the internet. And I'm like, maybe it's a good <laughs> thing we only get, like, 20 viewers a week. <laughs> Well, it's like, yeah. and I, we, we talk about it every once in a while, like, I'm always very curious what the normal Star Wars fans would think of us. Because, like, we're, we're pretty anti-Star Wars, but, like... It's because we've hurt ourselves. Right, but, like, we're, we're anti-Star Wars these days for a lot of reasons that normal Star Wars fans are not. Like, they're angry about stupid shit. Yeah. And yeah. generally the stuff that other people are angry about, we're fine with. <laughs> it's like, it's just everything yeah. else. I don't know. Disney Plus. Best seven ninety nine in the bid. Very soon. Again. I don't know. Again? Go sign up for Hulu as well. I have never once used Hulu oh, Hulu's great. in my life. I have most streaming services that I definitely pay for myself don't check into it. 
Uh, I do not have Hulu. Hulu's fine. No, Hulu's, uh... Freebie, sponsor us. Uh, for whatever reason... Oh, wait, no, that's an Amazon subsidiary, isn't it? Never mind, don't sponsor us. What the fuck isn't an Amazon subsidiary at this point? You better be careful before we're an Amazon subsidiary. That's the other big... <laughs> That's the other big one. Uh, Audible. Audible who sponsors, like, literal fucking rocks or whatever. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Audible uh, has been around so long. It's been sponsoring so many things that they, they were a major sponsor of, uh, of the American Revolution. So it's like... <laughs> so it's like... Yeah, I'll take it. Hey, maybe I'll if we get an Audible sponsorship, I can finally use Audible because, my God, do they not tell you in those ads how fucking expensive it is to use Audible. Listen, it is. I used to have Audible. I'm going to tell you what happens if we get an actual sponsor on this show that's willing to shill out even $500. Here's what's going to happen. We're all going to have a talk if we want to divide the money up or not or if we want to put it into the podcast. If we want to put it into the podcast, I'm buying a fucking Mac. And that's where that sponsor money's going. Everything from there, it's just money on top, baby. We all divide it up, and then that's it. Well, I think it. that's what we've always said, like, when we've uh, joked. You know, we've said we're not going to make a Patreon, but, like, if we did, it would specifically be to better the show, you know? Like, we're, uh... Yeah. This is not a, uh... I think it's clear at this point we're, what, two years in? This is not a get-rich-quick podcast. This is, uh, if money starts <laughs> no. rolling in, it's to make the show better, and then if the show gets better and more money rolls in, well then, fuck, we actually maybe make money from this show, but, no, first and foremost, yeah. it's to make this show, you know, a show. This show is still <laughs> happening, this show is still happening two years in because somebody told us to give up, and we said, well, we're doing this the rest of our lives now. <laughs> I, I do like that, like, the... The initial concept was to do this forever, but the actual fuel on the fire yeah. is that one, one motherfucker. Person telling us I, to I can't tell you enough. Every time I walk into my office and sit down at this fucking computer, whether it's to edit or to play a game on Steam or something, it's right there. It's literally right there for me to stare at, and it fuels me. We are fueled by spite. And our Chris. 33 subscribers on YouTube and the 20 people that listen to us on Podbean. A week. By spite <laughs> and water. This is true. And water. Our, the sponsor of today's video. What was the uh, what was the promo code, Chris? I'm glad you asked, Jay. <laughs> the promo code. <laughs> Just go to your tap and drink some fucking water. Do you have any idea how much pollution those fucking plastic bottles cause? Do you even give a shit about the planet, you monster? All one word. Uh, it's also brought to you by the first time we've done this bit where Ben has had any fucking idea what the fuck was going on during it. I don't. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. I've I've known this whole time for sure, totally. Audible an Audible subscription is sixteen dollars. Oh, and you a get month, Chris. how many books a month? One. Yeah, or you, or you can, can spend more, more money on top of the sixteen dollars a month yeah. you're spending. Hey! Do you know how much. You, Hence you know why I used to have an audible cost me when I go to my local bookstore, which I still do, and you should too. Internet, <laughs> fuck you if you buy your books online. Um, Man, they, hold on, I'm gonna just pause for there there for a second. There is not a bookstore within. It's uh, it's about an hour and a half. Well, that's different. That's the that's problem. very different. Yeah. I, I feel I feel blessed that somehow living in Nebraska, I could throw a rock and hit like five bookstores. Yeah, no, I typically. Books cost about sixteen, seventeen dollars if you're buying a, a soft cover, uh, paperback. You know, um, yeah. Like, why, why, why? Like, Audible is cool. Audible's great. Having access to audiobooks is awesome. It's such a bullshit service, though, in the way they present it. I mean, I, I still like, I still have the app and everything. I don't pay for the subscription anymore, but you yeah, still you keep, keep the books that the, you've accumulated. The stuff Which you've it's, got it's, like it's fine if you don't have a lot of time i guess one book a month is fine that's like yeah well that's what i like i usually listen to it while i'm like working or doing chores around the house which works but like i still prefer yeah. to sit down like if open i open up a book i had audible briefly and i i don't have as much time like i used to because the job i had previously i always had an earbud in and i was doing I was working while I was listening to stuff and like I, I still do that around the house when I'm doing 
chores and shit. But uh, I could get through, like, an audiobook is anywhere between, like, nine and, like, 20 hours, depending on the length of the book. Oh, God. Well, that's. I was like, they're not that short, but I was like, wait, I'm listening to well, that's, yeah, time. I mean, I can't say get long. I mean, God, there was, uh, there was, oh, God, what book was it that I was, I had on Audible? It was like almost 40 hours, I think. Um, uh, the second book, I think, second or third book of Wheel of Time is like 48 yeah, hours of um, audio. I, and that's I was, about I was going average. A lot for of short them. stories and stuff for a while, so they were a little shorter, but like, even. You'd be surprised how quickly you get through 40 hours of audio when you're listening to it constantly. And then it makes you real yeah. depressed about how much you're working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to... I, I want to be a little... I'm going to give a tepid, very tepid, because I don't know their business practices, but a tepid shout-out to thrift books. I personally am a big fan of buying shit on thrift books. Uh, because it's literally just, uh, when you're done with this book, hand it in to us and we'll sell you, we'll sell you the copy. If you have old books, sell it to us. We'll sell the copy. You can pick it, the condition. And I've had good experiences. Honestly, not for nothing. Fuck Amazon. But if you're buying books online and you're buying books on Amazon, always buy them used. They are so much cheaper. And who Mm -hmm. the fuck cares what quality your book is in physically? It's a book. As long as you can read it. Out. Yeah. It's a book. My wife and my father both have this thing where they oh, only life. open the book about this wide because they don't want to bend the fucking back. Fuck that. Bend that book. Fucking open it all the way. Read that shit. Break it. I got a copy. I got a copy of uh, Jerig Hold on. by Stephen Bruce that is like a fucking first or second edition from like the fucking 80s or whatever. And this fucking book, if I breathe on it wrong, is going to be done. It'll fall apart. Look at this fucking book. Look at this book. That's where the fucking spot, like the, the it's this book is fucking destroyed. But still, it's a book. It's a fucking oh book. Like you can read it. It's great. You guys are lucky. You guys are lucky. I've already packed up the bookshelves because I have one of my my grandfather was a massive Isaac Asimov fan. And I mean massive Isaac Asimov fan. So I have his Foundation Trilogy book from when he was in college, when he was younger than me. And he he actually gave me... Well, when he passed away, I took his copy of that. And I swear, the first two pages are missing. The front and back cover have fallen off. I have them, but they've fallen off. And I fucking love that book. I want to, if this is what we're going to be doing, I want to show these off for a second. Uh, this is one of my most prized possessions because it was one of the gateways into being a comic lover. Uh, this is uh, the guide to Ultimate X-Men uh, that they made in like 1999-2000. It basically just goes through the full history of X-Men and gives you like an idea of where to read. Look at that fucking spine. <laughs> Look at that fucking like, spy. Like mine. That exactly. one is, <laughs> if, if I if I hold this wrong, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. This is uh, Geoff Jones Teen Titans Volume Four. You see this? Looks fine to read, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. If it's readable, that's all that fucking matters. Yeah. Uh, well. Audience, thank you for listening to Book Talk every week forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this has been Fucking Star Wars words. every week forever. Uh, buy books used. Uh, buy books drink if, water. Um, drink water. Drink use water. Pro- use promo code. Uh, play Raid Shadow Legends. Now fuck that promo code. We're not doing that again. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> water, you had your time. <laughs> you water you had your... No, I'll put it in. I'll put it in and post. Just go to your tap and drink some fucking water. Do you have any idea how much pollution those fucking plastic bottles cause? Do you even give a shit about the planet, you monster? This has been Star Wars Every Week Forever. We love you all. Good night. Hello, all you beautiful people, and thank you very much for joining us on yet another week of Star Wars Every Week Forever. We upload every Wednesday around noon on various platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, TuneIn, and many others. If you have any friends, companions, people you would like to torture with our presence, feel free to send them our way. You know where to find us. 
If you would like to interact with the show and the various uh, co-hosts, you can find us quite easily on Twitter, at S-W-E-W-F. We check there very regularly, so it's easy to get a hold of us. And I hope all of you wonderful people have a glorious rest of your day. Until next we meet, may the Force be with you.